Wagner here just after 10.30 in Honolulu, 4.30 in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday, as we say, on the islands. February the 7th, 2014, and this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. Following a weaker-than-expected jobs report this morning, we do have a gold and silver trading higher with gold leading the way in terms of percentage gained up almost three quarters of a percent 1266 and change 1265 puts it up roughly eight dollars on the day silver also trading higher on the day up about nine cents just flirting with twenty dollars per ounce again as you can see current print 2001 the low 1970 and the high 2021 more on silver towards the end of the show Traders, I have been looking at a potential run in the market for about the last week, week and a half. This market, really, since it hit, call it 1250 to 1254 in terms of the area right, right in this area, it seems as though it's formed a base, not only a base, but really has effectively traded off of that point. My only hesitation in issuing a trigger or a buy signal earlier was the fact that I had a little concern about the jobs report since it's a number we really, really don't know. My daily subscribers did receive an aggressive buy signal yesterday. Uh, we were really looking to enter the market. And the reason I called it for aggressive is because of the uncertainty of how the report is going to come out. Of course, following the release of the report where we had a weaker than expected outcome, we issued a general by alert for all of those traders that hadn't taken that call in terms of an aggressive call our stops are roughly 1245 you should have them below that and we'll explain why that price point is where we are putting them aggressive traders are in at roughly 1258 conservative traders are long roughly here at 1266 more on that trade through the show first to the stop and effectively i want to explain uh, rationale behind putting it at 1245. As you can see, market's currently trading 66, 67. But in essence, we want to limit any kind of downside risk on the trade. And at the same time, we want to put it in a place that will effectively protect us in, in terms of any kind of downside move. These last couple of bottoms, this bottom here and this bottom here, of course, this goes into the area of 40 right here. But effectively, our last low in the market before rising was approximately 12.47. That's a 23% retracement, putting it below 12.45 should hold. Traders that are looking to have more protection would want to place it obviously below this point at 35, but I believe 45 should hold, and therefore we did recommend placing our stops there in terms of a long trade. Now, in terms of long-standing support and long-standing resistance, let's go ahead and compress this chart. This chart we're using predominantly for support in the market. And in terms of areas of support, we have 47 and then 35. Those are the critical areas to watch. What about resistance? Now, in terms of our various resistance levels that we absolutely want to uh, pay close attention to, our next real level of resistance roughly is, call it uh, 1273, 1274. I will compress the chart so you can see where this Fib retracement comes from. And then after that, you're not really going to see any kind of real resistance, I do not believe, till about 1288. We have another one at 93 and then 1302. We're using a 720 minute chart. Let's go ahead and compress this chart. When we do that, you will start to see some of the various areas that we have. Now, in terms of different resistance levels, the longer of this FIB retracement is more important. So just for time being, let's go ahead and remove that. And this is going to give us our more moderate or in intermediate, I should say, resistance levels, 1280, that is a resistance level of a retracement of approximately 23%. That comes in at 1280. You can see that now. In terms of this particular FIB retracement, we're really running it from this last high at 1435 down to these lows 
call it 1286, 1285 in that area. When we do that, this is really the next real level we want to look at. And then we go historically and looking back, do we have any indication where this had some merit? Well, absolutely here it did. Absolutely here it did not. This is really looking towards the low end. This is that 1245 on the way down. Also here, really no real clear-cut indication. So in terms of recent strength, we really get it right here. We get it when this market traded back up. This is off of the lows and then stalled, as we can quite easily see, right at this 1280 point. Above that is going to be 1309. And so those are the numbers we really want to look at. 1280, 1309 intermediate resistance currently. Now, another chart that we have been using over the last week or so has been this daily chart in which we have put in an Andrew's Pitchfork. And for our weekly subscribers, let me just quickly go through where we're drawing it from and what rationale we have behind it. But we're fixing, you need three points to fix a pitchfork. So we start with the high. This is, our, of course, our handle right here. And that high is gonna be of the handle. And then when we get our two sides, we take our low down here, roughly 1535, and our third top, which is the last time that it hit 1800. What it effectively does is it gives us a channel, a set of channel lines in a downtrend, which we've absolutely had. And because these lines are moving down, it's, I believe, a very effective way to take a look at when it's trending uh, within the downtrend or when it's try attempting to break out. And this is a real good way to see that. When we look at this chart, the one thing that I am quite pleased with is in terms of the most recent activity, the handle of course goes in at 50%, 38%, and that's what we want to focus on right now. Because as this market came down, we can see that these channels, and this of course is 23, these channels were fairly effective. Realize that this was drawn from information that comes way before any of these market moves, and it correctly predicts not only the bottom of the market, but in a downtrend, what you're going to see is it moving down these channels. So whereas it starts at the zero line, and that, of course, is drawn from that $1,800 top. You can see it drops, and then it finds support at a 76% retracement. As it comes back up, it stalls at the 23%, comes back down. This, of course, is where the market lined up with that bottom. We had that tremendous rally, and this is the rally, the, the, uh, rally, the second rally that we saw in the marketplace or excuse me, this is the primary rally that we saw in the marketplace. And you can see that it only goes to about, what, the 23% level. So when it came down, we had to find resistance here at the 38, comes a little bit above. And then as the market begins to move up, it moves up off of these channels, kind of stair steps back up moves through these channels and my question over this last week w was will it be able to effectively trade because we got to the top of this channel will we find it have resistance as it has here and here although a little bit above it or will it start to really track back below now effectively we are still trading today but effectively it does appear as though it has closed above this channel for the close of the week. And to me, that's an indication that our next real level that we'll look at for it to track to, if it doesn't kind of just run out of steam like we saw these two tops, we are going to effectively look for this particular 23% channel right in here as the channel that it might move to before finding any kind of real resistance in the market. And the key also is that we are definitely experiencing a rally as it moved off of these lows at around 1186. So now that we've covered our very, very short term with our 60, 240 minute charts, intermediate resistance, we did that with our, our 720 and we looked at the, the channels on our daily. We're looking at a three day chart, Henkin format, Japanese average format. And we also have our most current Elliott wave count. And there's a couple of things we really want to note within this. Most critically is this long-standing resistance line that we identified as this market came down. 
And the question is whether or not we had a clear and utter break above that. Now, you be the judge because let's see how, how at best we can line this up. There's no doubt, depending on how you draw the line, you can see these are quite into the tops here, but they do line up with these tops. You've just landed right above this point. We can also create this particular resistance line, so we're just at it, depending on how we have this, this angle or this tact. But what I think is most impressive, most impressive, is when we look at the three-day Japanese average candles, and let's go ahead and blow that up. We absolutely, without a question of a doubt, have a pretty clear and defined break and break from that double bottom that we've identified, of course, that being at around 1181 the first time, and I believe 1186 here. So what does that mean and how does that affect our current call on the market? Well, I absolutely believe that in terms of our wave count, we've absolutely seen our third intermediate, which is, our, or excuse me, our sub count off of our intermediate five. And the real question is, is this most recent rally the beginning of a counter trend? Meaning if we're in a bear count, we'll go into some sort of an ABC. If we do, we are going to look for higher prices in a rally. However, if we run into a brick wall, in other words, if we don't have the ability to break above this long-standing resistance line, we could see it back off. That would that would mean that in essence, what we saw is from our sub count, this would be wave four right here. And then we would get one more down move, which would complete it or our fifth wave five out of five. And then we would start the actual climb in the market. I'm of the tendency or under the belief that there is, at this point, a very, very decent, decent probability that we witness this double bottom, 1181 to 1186, and that we actually saw what we talked about, that bear market truncation in which you get a truncated fifth wave. It's called a flat when we're looking at it from a bull count. But in essence, what you're looking at is the fact that wave three, wave five have seriously equal lows now with that in mind if this market continues to come up you can see the first real area that will probably see some resistance if in fact the market trades higher and we're correct in our current model because that's at 23 percent my sense is the fact that we've made it above call it 1250 because that was real support in terms of this particular chart we've got a real opportunity to at least see this market go run and test you know just under 1300 1293 and then 1302 that's really what we're going to be looking at this will be our last chart for gold on today's show we're looking at a weekly chart this weekly chart of course has our Elliott wave count, this is all intermediate. The sub count, of course, would be behind that. We also have this long standing resistance line. It is in standard candlestick format, so we are looking at true opens, true closes, highs, and lows. On a green candle, that's this week, this last candle, we can effectively see market is trading roughly 66, 67, but it is just above this particular long standing resistance area. To be honest with you, I would have preferred to see a much more domineering, a dominant breakout and rally to the upside, but we'll take what we get. And most importantly, if we can form a base and begin to trend higher, as I said, effectively, I believe in terms of our exit strategy right now, we might in fact have some pretty clear sailing until about 1293 to 1302, the two areas that I talked about. Lastly, let's take a look at silver. As you know, I did not, did not put out a recommendation to go long silver. And I want to spend a couple of moments kind of explaining my rationale behind it. Unlike gold that has had a defined and sizable rally that has come off of a low and consistently moved above that low with a characteristics of higher highs and higher lows as the market moved up, we're not seeing that in silver. You've got these series of tops in silver that are roughly at 1240 to 1250. You can see those right here. They're quite clear. You don't even need to be a market technician to see that you've got some clear cut resistance in this area. Now, as this market has traded, we have defined 
a real strong support level just above $19 per ounce and a real strong resistance level just about $20.50. So about a dollar and a half range. The key is this, as this market moved up and got close to this end of the range, we've seen it tracking really strongly where we can predominantly see moving to the high of the range, low, high of the range, mid range, high of the range, back to the low. My sense is, are we going to now see that again as it approaches the high? So when we issued the buy signal in gold yesterday, my sense was that we were really, really much too close to the high to feel comfortable because we have not seen silver really be able to break above 2050. Any kind of a breakout above that point to me is it just very, very strong. We'll see what kind of follow through, if any, we get next week and we'll look to add a long silver to our portfolio. But as I said, my reason for concern with issuing any kind of a buy signal with silver is it's currently trading towards the top of that tightly defined range that we are seeing. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you it's always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.